Donald Trump's personal lawyer, currently embattled in the FBI probe, Michael Cohen, stands, and this is breaking, accused of taking half a million dollars from a sanctioned Russian oligarch during Donald Trump's presidency. You did hear that right, and we will explain. This allegation comes from Michael Cohen's opponent, Michael Avenatti, who represents Stormy Daniels. And breaking right now, he has released information, seven pages, which I'm going to walk through, and this tweet, where he talks about the allegation that Michael Cohen received half a million dollars in the months after the 2016 election from a company controlled by a Russian oligarch who has been sanctioned by the United States and is linked to Putin. I want to be very clear before I go any further, because this is a breaking allegation. NBC News has not yet been able to confirm this material. We don't have, for example, the underlying documents from the bank, and we don't have yet a full response from Mr. Cohen. I promise to bring it to you as soon as we get it. But I do know, and I can tell you, that the very oligarch mentioned here in this new material, a man named Victor Vexelberg, was not only sanctioned by the U.S. Treasury in April under the Trump administration, but he was also contacted by Mueller's investigators who reportedly questioned him two months ago, according to the New York Times. They snagged him as he flew into a New York area airport. Now, Vexelberg has not been identified as a suspect in connection with the Mueller probe. For more analysis on this very unusual story and set of allegations, I want to turn to former Watergate special prosecutor Nick Ackerman, a former federal prosecutor, Kenneth White, Caddy Kay, Washington correspondent for BBC World News America, and NBC national correspondent Heidi Prisbilla. Uh, my thanks to each of you. Nick, I want to start with you, and, and again, at the, uh, be very clear about what I'm holding. These are seven pages of material that represent one side of the story, not both sides, not a complete account. Sometimes I hold up NBC reporting or New York Times reporting. This is not that. But what is in here? What is alleged? And this is breaking right now from Mr. Avenatti, who is who's familiar to our viewers. He was on this show recently. Is one of the most serious claims you could make in connection with the entire Mueller probe because it alleges a direct line of money from an oligarch linked to Putin to a very senior Trump aide, Michael Cohen, during the pendency of the Trump administration, after he became president, and with the implication that there might be federal laws broken, including the Bank Secrecy Act. Your analysis. Well, I read this, too, just in the last few minutes. Uh, and I must say, I'm not surprised. I mean, I think what's been happening all along is that the White House has been trying to deflect attention with that search warrant, trying to say it related to Stormy Daniels and the payoff of other women. I've always thought that this related to the Russian investigation and the central allegations uh, that Mueller is looking at. And if this is true, that proves it. Michael Cohen was involved in trying to set up a Trump Tower in Moscow for Trump. Uh, he was allegedly involved in going to Prague after Manafort left the campaign to try and keep the, the um, relationship going between the Russians and the Trump campaign. I mean, all this does is add more support to those allegations. I mean, in fact, if you look at the Christopher Steele uh, memo, uh, there was more than one source that told them this. I believe it's been reported most recently that another source, a new source, has come out confirming it. Uh, and Michael Cohen hasn't really denied it other than to say he didn't go. But the proof he has shown really doesn't support that right. he didn't go you're, to Prague. You're referring to the very big allegation in the dossier that Michael Cohen would have been an in-person link uh, in the effort to potentially collude. Uh, this allegation here is interesting because while it doesn't confirm or deny that, it would track with very high level ongoing contact with oligarchs who don't take my word for it, don't take your word for it, take the Trump Treasury administration's word for it. They sanction these individuals because of their view that this, they conduct illicit activities on behalf of Putin. I want to read again from this I mean, allegation. I think there's more than, more than one oligarch that's mentioned in here. Right. And let me read from this. The allegation is, and I want to ask you how someone might come to know something like this, given that there's an open probe, that from October 2016 until January 2018, so until this year, Mr. Cohen used his bank account here for over four million dollars in transactions including half a million traced to mr victor vexelberg this oligarch and that it says that mr vexelberg and his cousin a man named mr andrew intrater routed these payments to mr cohen through a company called columbus nova llc 
And that firm, which has over two billion in assets, is seen as a, a vehicle for Renova Group in Russia. And that Mr. Cohen accepted these payments while acting as Mr. Trump's personal attorney, President Trump, uh, and while dealing with all these other issues. So number one, how would Mr. Avenatti know this? He alleges this to be true. And number two, do you see any potential federal criminal liability? Well, first of all, it looks to me like he's reading right off of bank records. I mean, the information that is included in here looks like it has been taken seriatim off of bank records. Now, how he got those, I have no idea. Uh, but there are certainly, the crimes involved here are numerous. I mean, this could prove the conspiracy between the campaign uh, and the Russians with respect to the... You see this as potential collusion evidence. Oh, I think it's conspiracy evidence for both the conspiracy to steal the emails and distribute them to help Trump get elected as president, as well as the conspiracy relating to Facebook uh, and the use of social media to suppress the Clinton vote. And let me bring in uh, Caddy Kay, your analysis. Yeah, I mean, look, we're just getting this news, right? I haven't read those seven documents that you've got. We're learning more about um, Victor Vexelberg, who apparently, from what you're saying, Ari, is the oligarch who is named in this Avenatti tweet. Uh, he is somebody who has had long ties to the Trump administration. He went to the inauguration back in 2017. Uh, he got a ticket to that. He is somebody who was investing in the Bank of Cyprus at the time that Wilbur Ross was the vice chairman of the Bank of Cyprus. Uh, we will have to wait to see whether there is a paper trail that leads this alleged half a million dollar loan um, to Michael Cohen to the actual payments that were made to Stormy Daniels. Um, Vexelberg is also somebody, by the way, who invested, who gave money to the Clinton Foundation through his business operations. So he's not somebody who is, you know, politically tied one way or another to Republicans or Democrats. I mean, he's somebody who's spread his political largesse around. We'll, we'll have to learn more um, and not just from a tweet from Michael, from uh, Avenatti. Right. Well, what's so notable about this, and, and Kenneth, I want your perspective as well on the legal implications, is um, it's more than a tweet. These, this doc documentation uh, either is based on something uh, or it's somehow completely made up. But these are very specific numbers. I'm looking at Kenneth, for example, with dates. October 5th, 2017, um, he alleges $99,980. And that same amount, November 3rd, December 1st, January 5th, again, all during the pendency of the Trump administration. How do you think Mr. Avenatti would come into contact with this kind of material? Might it involve the fact that the FBI is interviewing people? Uh, and if there was uh, misleading information that Mr. Cohen provided the bank, is that a big deal or not? Well, sure. It really opens up all the different avenues that uh, the special counsel might be pursuing in the Russia investigation and that the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York might be pursuing in connection with Mr. Cohen. I think it's interesting that it comes so hard upon a week of Rudy Giuliani on behalf of the president coming out and giving new and different answers about whether and how Michael Cohen was reimbursed for uh, giving money to uh, Ms. Clifford uh, for her silence. So when you add in that uncertainty and you add in that he then said, well, maybe I don't have all the facts straight yet, and then you have this new story about money coming contemporaneously to Mr. Cohen, well, it certainly red meat to all the prosecutors, both in New York and in D.C. And, sir, you're saying that it is possible, we don't know, you're saying it is possible um, that Rudy Giuliani, in addition to contradicting himself, may have provided incomplete information and that part of the Stormy Daniels payment could have been reimbursed by this oligarch? I think it's really speculative at this point, and I think we have to keep in mind that Mr. Avenatti is, uh, you know, a litigation opponent of Mr. Cohen. We should view it through that lens. Mm -hmm. But uh, Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani have set up the circumstance where this type of allegation can be inherently credible and get a lot of play uh, even before we see all the documents because their messaging on it has been so incoherent, because there have been so many different stories emerging. Some of them uh, sound like confessions to crimes. Uh, and so when you've already got such a mess about what money was going where and why and what the president knew and when he knew it, adding on this new layer just uh, it's going to exactly the sort of right. thing that federal prosecutors are going to want to look into very deeply. Well, and Rudy Giuliani can lie to the press and the American people if he so chooses. That is lawful. Uh, as you know, there are strict know-your-customer rules to prevent money laundering that are enforced by federal authorities. Uh, and lying to a bank 
is not lawful. Can you speak to the exposure on that? Well, sure. There's an incredibly confusing thicket of laws surrounding particularly international money transfers, and they take people acting with a lot of care to get it right. And uh, frankly, I don't think anything we've seen about the way Mr. Cohen dealt with transactions or any of the stories from Mr. Giuliani about how he was reimbursed reflect any sort of care or deliberation. And, you know, were they my clients, I would be extremely concerned not only about what had happened, but also about where the trail of their various inconsistent statements would be leading them and how they would be incriminating them. Um, and then, Heidi, you may remember when um, Kissinger talked about a, a riddle wrapped in an enigma. Uh, I wonder if the fact that the Russian oligarch in this new breaking allegation, the fact that he's also the same Russian oligarch that Bob Mueller's team already stopped when he got off a private plane and already questioned, I wonder if that is a coincidence wrapped in a coincidence or at some point we have to acknowledge the glaring uh, pieces of information that all seem to be seeping out that look like more than Stormy Daniels, that look like Russia questions. That was what Michael Avenatti perhaps was implying when he tweeted a week or so ago that when all of the information here comes out, this president will not serve out his term. That was a pretty bold claim. A lot of people were wondering what was behind that. The big question to me, just looking at this preliminarily as this is breaking, is whether this, we've already known that Michael Cohen is a, a lot of trouble, and we've known that ever since his office was raided, that mm -hmm. it may be just a matter of time before he's brought up on some kind of bank fraud or maybe mail fraud charges. The question here is whether this is related to Michael Cohen's already established personal connections with the Russians. There was just some great reporting out this morning about his connections with the Russians through a Ukrainian family that he married into, his having sold his stake in a bar that was apparently frequented by Russian mob figures, or whether we can take this to the second level and say that there is some connection here in terms of collusion. And that is where Stormy Daniels amazingly would come in is if via Putin or via some kind of uh, or via the Russian oligarch Putin or other Russians were trying to influence our election by keeping the Stormy Daniels story quiet. That would be an amazing development in this story. Obviously, you know, this is not coming from a journalism outlet. We don't have all the documentation yet. Um, but the big question here is that distinction between Michael Cohen's personal connections, for which he is already obviously in big trouble uh, going forward, or whether we can pull Trump into this in terms of collusion. And that's where the stormy connection is so right. important. And to, and to build on your point, Heidi, I mean, pulling Trump into this is something that Michael Cohen did. Uh, the entity alleged is essential consultants, which is not a thing that existed. It was a thing that Michael Cohen created in the heat of the presidential campaign to handle money for Donald Trump. Uh, and the fact that Rudy Giuliani spent so much time talking about whether campaign funds were used or not suggests that at some level he was concerned uh, about that money flow and trying to clean it up. The fact that it's a floating reimbursement question sort of leaves open, like any slush fund, what you call and count as a reimbursement. Uh, I, I wonder what you think uh, uh, Donald Trump is thinking about with all this coming out tonight. <laughs> Heidi. Oh, I, I mean, I have to wonder if he is going to continue to keep Giuliani as his front man. It's clear that Giuliani is not a traditional lawyer. He's coming out there on the airwaves and trying to just muddy the waters. And every time he does, he seems to get the president into more legal peril. For instance, uh, suggesting that there may have been a campaign finance violation behind the Stormy Daniels payment. Uh, this is serious now because it is implicating Trump with these Russian oligarchs, I have to w imagine that he is huddling with his lawyers uh, and they are trying to figure out what exactly, how do they respond to this or if they respond to this, if they say anything, uh, given the consequences and the severity of the information that appears to be contained in these, these, these documents that are being released. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.